Hey, what's up guys, Sir Eminon here, and welcome to episode number 5 of Chief Competitive Contenders, the series where I take a look at a budget deck of under $100 and try and pit it up against the metagame. So for this week, we're going to be looking at Zodiac, which uh, by the community tab poll, which I will put up on screen right now, is a very, very popular deck for this series, and I can see why, because it's a fan favorite deck, it's uh, notoriously pretty cheap right now, and it has pretty good tools to be able to combat the metagame if you look at it from the perspective of being able to just jam in a bunch of hand traps, as you can see uh, on the list. But yeah, this deck definitely took the poll in a landslide victory, uh, so I will be happy to bring it to you guys, because I really do like this deck. And I think it has a pretty uh, decent spot in the metagame right now as far as just being able to main deck, again, just a boatload of hand traps. Uh, it's very adaptable, which is good. Um, and I think that even though its power level isn't that good, obviously by itself, I think the ideal version of this deck would involve either Dragoon or Dogmatica. Uh, and we obviously aren't going to be able to play those cards for you know, budget constraint purposes. But even still, the pure variant has things going for it as far as just being very recursive, being uh, very simple and just overall having a very very good game plan um, if you're able to carry out what you wish to do uh, so yeah i'll also put on screen for you guys the uh the price breakdown for each individual card and if you guys do want to buy any of the cards that are in here or buy the deck in general uh, feel free to use my tcg player affiliate link the link is down below in the description uh, would definitely help me out and would appreciate your support as always uh, the only really outlier here is the Shockanine, which is sitting around 13-ish, hovering around like 12 to 14, just wavering uh, from day to day, so be sure to check, obviously. Uh, and also definitely check out the, ex or it's not Excel, I keep calling it Excel, uh, the Google spreadsheet uh, in the description box down below if you want to see uh, like more API calculators and just more data in general, if you want to look at it. But um yeah like besides shock and Nine, like everything else is relatively cheap it's just that things add up very fast like the thorough blades the ghost ogres and even the hand traps uh they all add up uh very very surprisingly quickly um just when you're given such a constraint of under 100 dollars. and 150 would definitely make things easier but um, you know part of the challenge and part of the reason why i like the series so much is giving myself that challenge of trying to stick to under, stick to under 100 dollars. and while i didn't necessarily technically do it this time around i realized that it's five dollars over Bear with me, uh, I know that a lot of people aren't building this strictly from scratch, like most of you guys probably own cards like Desires, or like the Hand Traps, some of them, or a Cosmic Cyclone, you know, these are cards that are probably lying around for most people. So, uh, despite that, we are sticking to the idea that we're building this from ground zero, so that's uh, obviously why we have a budget constraint to begin with. Otherwise, if we're making assumptions, then it kind of just defeats the purpose. But yeah, well, without further ado, let's just go ahead and talk about the deck list. I'll go, not super in depth, but I'll talk about some of the card choices. Uh, so we got, for the zoos, we got three Thoroughblade, three Whiptail, three Ram Ram, a Rap here, as well as a Bunny Blast. Uh, these are relatively standard ratios, except maybe the Bunny Blast. Uh, Blade is the one you want to be able to open early to cycle through cards, because the more hand traps you can draw, the better off you'll be. Whiptail is your out to things that can't be targeted or destroyed. If, you're, if you have a way to bait out Dragoon, this is a very, very nice way to clear it. It's kind of hard to because nothing can threaten the Dragoon besides this card, but uh, it is not once per turn, so you can possibly catch your opponent off guard with it. Um, you got Ram Ram for your comboing, like popping it with Dryden and stuff. Uh, Rap here, which is really good. You can either send the Ram turn one if you want to go for Terminal Mega Hops, or the other option you could do based on the matchup is you can send Bunny Blast. And then go Shock and I revive it, and then Dryden pop the Bunny Blast to add back the Rat, which is a play that I actually mess up, but uh, it's a play that you can do. Uh, you'll see that I mess it up in one of the replays, but um, yeah, it's a play you can do that you can make sure you have a follow up play for next turn and still end on Dryden, which is nice, because uh, some decks have a very very clean answer to Mega Cops like Orcus or really any back row deck, um, or any deck that can just out this without using monsters. Uh, so sometimes just ending on Dryden with a Zoo monster in hand is uh, what you want to be doing. And then for hand traps, we got three Veiler, three DD Crow, three Token Collector, uh, two Ghost Ogre, and three Gamma. So the best hand traps in the format right now, being like Nibiru, Impermanence, etc., uh, and even Ash, are well outside the budget range. So we kind of have to consider what cards we can run in place of them. And I figure that these are some of the best choices. So Gamma is definitely the best hand trap that we can play within our budget, and it's one of the best hand traps in general. So we're gonna run it for sure, especially in a combo-oriented format like this one. Uh, Veiler is doing its impression of uh, infinite impermanence, and for the most part, it honestly does a good enough job. So yeah, this is definitely fine. The only thing that sucks is that it doesn't play around triple tactics talent, but none of these cards do, so uh, you're just trying to hope that enough hand traps will stop them and they don't have the triple tactics. 
Then you got the uh, Ghost Ogre, which is pretty decent this format. It can be situational at times, but you know you can do things like hit the Romulus so that they can't really equip Lance. You can um, hit Fiber so they can't go in a cross. Uh, you can maybe hit Guard Dragons if they're not careful with their zone placement, or they don't go LP Striker, they go LP Pisty. Uh, you can you can do things like that. You can like hit Lost World. There, there's random applications for this card. Uh, it's not the best, but it, it's good enough to warrant its inclusion. I feel. Uh, DD Crow uh, is in here because it's like probably I think it's one of the cheaper hand traps in here, and it is not the best, but it can remove like Martial Meta Marcher targets as well as a uh, Hit Miscellaneous Saurus. So. Um, there's fringe applications for this card as well. Uh, picked three of it over Ogre because strictly of price reasons. I didn't want to go too heavy over the budget. And then three Token Collector, which is very, very interesting. Uh, it lost a lot of its power because of uh, the banning of Olion. But regardless, Infernoble still makes Aurora on, so you can punish them for that. As well as uh, both Dragonlink and uh, Infernoble making the Link Cross plays very, very often still. So you can capitalize on that pretty well. It does suck against Dino if they have Lost World, obviously, because you're not going to ever be able to trigger it. But uh, it is, at the very least, an Earth, which helps you make like Mrs. Radiant, which is like fine. Uh, so that's like not the end of the world. And then for spells, we got Barrage, 3 Tanky, 3 Desires, an Avarice, 3 Living Fossil, Monster Reborn, and Call by the Grave. So we can talk about the... Uh, there's two things we can talk about, which is Avarice and Living Fossil. Avarice first. Uh, I really... I actually wasn't playing this card for a while, but then I realized sometimes you just need to be able to recycle your resources. And the problem with it is that it's not a starter card, it is a bomb. And like even if you are able to open like enough monsters turn one, like maybe you can like stack just a bunch of zoos, right? Uh, if you're not specifically making Mega Clops, then this card is not really gonna be live turn one. Like you're never gonna be able to link away your Dryden into a gravity controller unless like you open Living Fossil and wanna bring something back, but that just seems like a waste at that point. You'd rather just save it for later. It's a card you want to see late game, which prevent, presents issues in deck building because it's not searchable, so do you want to play multiples of it so you can actually see it or, and not risk banishing it off desires, or do you want to play just one of it? I opted for one of it because I just think that it's it's never a card that I want to be dead. I'm trying to minimize the dead cards in this deck, and the only real dead card is Driver. Everything else can be activated uh, pretty much at any point. Um, obviously not Gamma if you have a board, but uh, it's just a go second card. But yeah, I think Avarice is like the least likely card to be live in, you know, a lot of scenarios outside of, or like on turn one rather. Outside of turn one, it's amazing, but yeah, it's just that you can't really afford to be giving your opponent like extra, extra opportunities to play the game. Like you just need every card to be live. So I figured that like Avarice is good in the situations where you need it, uh, which again is like kind of flawed logic because it's it sort of falls into the argument of like you want to see sometimes but not all the time. But really, that's sort of how bombs in general work. So. Uh, it was a struggle for me to kind of slot this card in here as far as determining what I felt the right ratio was, but um, I certainly don't think that 3 is correct, uh, but like you could probably get away with 2 or even 0. Um, I'd probably play 1 or 2 though, probably not 0 either to be honest. I was testing 0 and I just missed it. Uh, then we have 3 Living Fossil, uh, which I mentioned. This is good because if your normal summon gets popped, like just on summon, say like they have Conquistador, they have Dogmatic of Punishment, uh, just something along those lines. You just want something to be able to bring it back. And sure, it doesn't work against everything like Seal Balance or, uh, I don't know, Ultimate Conductor Tyranno, just booking it. It still works against a lot of the disruptions because the problem with the deck is that like it's very normal summon reliant and if you can't get it to stick, then you're never really going to get anywhere with your engine. So this is really good for that purpose. It's also good for being able to just push damage because that's a struggle this deck has without cards like Dragoon or Dogmatica cards. You just need ways to actually win the game. So just getting an extra whip tail or extra Thoroughblade to be able to start exceeding and then going into more, uh, just putting more damage on the field is really, really essential. Uh, other two spells are pretty staple, I would think. And then we have Combo, which is similar to Avarice, but it's part of the engine, so it's fine. Like both of these cards, I feel are just very, very slow, um, but you need to play them because having recoverability is pretty, pretty vital at times. Then we got the extra deck, which is Dryden, 3 Shockanine, 3 Tiger Mortar, 2 Hammer Kong, and a Borbo. Uh, I don't think I need to really explain anything here. It is uh, standard as can be. Then we got the Drill Driver Vespinato, which is actually a very crucial card because you need to be able to uh, overlay over one of your weaker XCs uh, that have like 0-0 zero, zero stats and then turn it into just a big beat stick. 
realistically, like that is <laughs> that is a big problem the deck has is, and that's another reason why I just didn't play upstart, or a reason why I didn't play upstart, is that you just need to be able to end the game, and it does have a good floating effect too, which is nice. Uh, piercing doesn't really come up, but it's just there to be able to be a twenty five hundred body on a whim. Then we got Mega Clops, Dreamadol, Mrs. Radiant, and Gravity Controller. Um, obviously, uh, these are pretty staple, except me Mrs. Radiant, because nobody really plays this card anymore. But uh, again, the idea of just needing damage, I cannot stress it enough, this deck really, really sucks at killing your opponent. Um, and one Dryden is not hard for a lot of decks to play through, even turn after turn, uh, even if you can keep recurring it. Uh, when your opponent has like one card, uh, starter cards, uh, in the form of like Dragon Link or like Alistair or things like that, you know, like it's not too hard for your opponent to push past the Dryden. So you really, really do need uh, ways to just end the game as quickly as you can. And Gravity Control is there for things that you can't normally out with the rest of your extra deck. Uh, the side deck is Pangratops, uh, Mind Control, which are good go second cards, and then Abyss Dweller, which is here as kind of a, like a toolbox card. You can easily replace this for something else that you wish to. Um, and we have three Cosmic, three Abyss, or sorry, not three Abyss Dweller, three Heavy Storm Duster, uh, three Goza Match, two Rivalry of Warlords, Warlords, and an Imperial Order. Getting my words kind of tongue tied today. Uh, but yeah, you can easily re replace the Dweller with the third Rivalry, and that would be fine. Uh, the reason why I'm playing these Floodgates is that if you're going first, your opponent is probably not going to board in a lot of spell and trap removal because even though this deck is historically a control deck with you know, a fair amount of back row cards, like back in the day, with like strikes and D barriers and whatnot, uh, you, this version of the deck plays a lot of hand traps, and that's where all of your defensive pow power and your defensive lineup is coming from. So if your opponent sees this, they're not really going to board in hand traps, or sorry, they're not going to board in things to combat uh, back row because they're worried about the hand traps. So you can board these in and kind of halt your opponent if you're going first, which is really nice. Uh, even against decks like Dragon Link and Infernoble with like a lot of monotyping and attributes, you can actually flip these on when they make their uh, push for like Haka Fibrax. Um, and like Goes Match is actually pretty nice against uh, Dragon Link to some degree because Romulus is a win as well. So, yeah, these cards are good for just punishing like Haka Fibrax plays because that's when they start to diversi diversify their typing and attributes. And then Order is there if you want to stop like spell heavy decks. Like Striker is still kind of running around um, to some extent. So, that is what is what that is there for. But yeah, this is going to do it for the deck profile, and now we're going to go ahead and move into the replays. Alrighty guys, so this first best of three is going to be up against uh, Grand Maju. Just a reminder, we do uh, we do showcase matches just to be able to incorporate the side deck, because no point in utilizing the side deck in the series if we don't get to use it. Uh, so this is a very interesting and unique Grand Maju hybrid. I'm just going to run through his deck just real fast, because uh, you see it's not really playing like Dangers or the Golden Castle package, but instead playing like a lot of the or the uh, Gizmic monsters, not just Orochi. Um, so this one special summons itself from the hand against uh, extra decks, centric decks, which is nice for having a big body on the board. Uh, this is nice as just getting another normal summon. Um, this uh, you also have uh, the Uka, which is a fringe counter still being somewhat played against uh, Needle Fiber, a lot less popular now, but still an option. Um, and then you got Eater Millions, you got like Kaiju's, Super Poly. Uh, those are pretty standard. Um, and you got some fairy tale cards as well as uh, obviously the Maju himself. So, uh, pretty interesting take on the list. I wouldn't say it's standard by any means, but um, it's obviously Grand Maju decks aren't solely relied on Grand Maju. That's like kind of a not really a thing anymore as much. It's just an extra bonus, and you build the deck kind of around Maju, you know, in one direction or another. Whether it be you know through spamming the board by dangers, having like waste out your opponent's board, things like that. But as far as our hand is concerned. Uh, yeah, it's uh, pretty good, going first especially. Uh, going second against combo decks, it would definitely not be very good, because uh, considering we play so many hand traps and we didn't open one, that would have been unfortunate, but uh, luckily we did. And this is a continual thing that like I kind of still somewhat debate upon, is like whether or not starting off with turn 1 Mega Clops is actually that good, because cards like Impermanence and like you see here Super Poly or like or Dogmatic of Punishment, uh, those can like all easily out that card, and it doesn't do anything reactively, so I'm not a big fan of it, but I went for it here just to one, try it out. Uh, I generally prefer ending on only, like just solely Dryden, um, but also we drew Avarice, which I did mention in the deck profile, is not very live, usually turn one, so this is a way to easily make it live. So yeah, decide to uh, go ahead and utilize the Avarice, obviously uh, shuffling back our stuff. Uh, and we draw, you know, not really the best cards. Token Collector is only really useful against specific combo decks. 
and uh, Gamma is like or dead rather if you were going first most of the time, of course. Uh, and that's another reason why Dryden is like you know better if you know you have Gamma. Obviously, I drew it afterward, but um, like your Dryden is very susceptible to being cleared, of course. So having Gamma as a backup is uh, not out of the question, as opposed to in theory you want your Mega Clops to stick. So then Gamma is not really going to be live there, but. Uh, I digress. Uh, for turn, they're going to draw a copy of Eater of Millions, which uh, doesn't out the Maju, uh, but uh, if our opponent actually set the Super Poly here, if I summon any Zoo monster, they actually out it because uh, they have a copy of... Uh, they have Mudragon here in their extra deck. So that would have been a very, very clean answer to it. Um, and they did point out, I think, mid-game, if I remember that they uh, just misplayed their setting tactics instead. But... Yeah, we're gonna just go ahead and carry on here. We have all three token collector in hand, which is perfect. Um, we, yeah, we just pop the uh, eater with the Dryden, uh, and then we shock and nine back our guys, and then uh, we can also Mega Clops to out the other card. Uh, here I go for Tiger Mortar, and I just put the Ram Ram under the Dryden to give an extra body. I could have uh, put it under the Hammer Column just to go Column Dryden because it's negated, so it won't detach in the end phase. Just have some targeting protection, but I don't think targeting protection is super relevant in this matchup, and especially not in the face of a Super Poly. So we're going to get him for a little bit of damage, obviously it's halved because we use Mega Clops. And we're just going to pass. We do have Whip Tail, so we have uh, some additional forms disruption if we need it. Uh, but we do get Super Polyed, as well as the Gizmic Uka coming down. Uh, er, not Uka, uh, Okami. Sorry, I hovered over the wrong one. Uh, but yeah, uh, the Mud Dragon is going to swing into the Hammer Kong, and then I decided to just out the uh, the big Gizmic by using the, uh, the Whip Tail. Um... Yeah, one way or the other, I would have had one monster remaining and the other would have died, so it didn't really matter if I whip tailed the Hammer Kong or whip tailed the Tiger Mortar. Plus, I still have a zoo to play with, so it's fine. So, yeah, for turn we draw another Gamma, so I just keep drawing dead cards. Uh, like, this, these hand traps are not meant for this particular type of matchup, but that's why it's still worth showcasing, because it's like, if you know your meta is comprised more of this, um, like these types of rogue decks, and you probably should adapt your deck a little bit. That's kind of the whole concept of Zoo. But I'm just showing if you are planning on playing a lot of meta decks, uh, how the strengths are against them, and then if you do prepare for meta and run into rogue, this is what you might face. So um, you got to show up both sides of you know the same coin. You can't really have it both ways. Uh, you'll notice in mid combo, my opponent actually uh, declared fire, and. Um, it actually says that your opponent cannot target this card or monsters on the field with the same attribute as this card. So if they actually change this to an Earth, I wouldn't have been able to Tiger Mortar target my Dryden because it does have to target. So uh, th I think they use it so that uh, Edo Pro would stop asking them. But yeah, actually declaring Earth would have been relevant there for sure. Like actually super relevant. Uh, but we go for a Drill Driver Respinato. Uh, again, this is like one of the reasons why it's so good. Is it just beats over things because literally you have such a hard time putting attack points on board. Uh, and I wanted material under the Dryden as opposed to, you know, attaching a Thurial Blade underneath the, uh, the monster. So yeah, I still have, like, one interruption. Uh, they draw Desire's Return, which is pretty good. Uh, and then drawing a Kaiju. Deciding not to Kaiju because it just gives me a bigger beat stick. And they do plan on summoning the Uka, which, you know, makes, makes sense. You don't want to, like, Kaiju me and then give me a, you know, give me a bigger monster. Just beat over the... Or summon a smaller monster so I can beat over it with a Kaiju, rather. So I got Shaka 9 here. Uh, I bring back Borbo. Uh, I, I forgot that uh, you can't overlay when you uh, Shaka 9 because I was like still playing around with the deck. So, um, yeah. So I was like trying to recover here because I'm like, oh yeah, now I can't uh, keep my Dryden. So that's kind of awkward, right? So here I'm just trying to put enough monsters on board to where I can uh, assemble lethal. Uh, so normally the token collector, because like I mentioned, it's an earth monster, so you can go into Mrs. Radiant. And, uh... My opponent never actually, uh, oh, it, it only works if it's something from the main deck. My bad, my bad. I, I, for some reason, misread this card. Never mind. So yeah, they couldn't have summoned this card. But yeah, that's gonna pretty much be it for the first game. Uh, pretty straightforward here. Alrighty, guys. Moving on to game number two here, and I'm gonna put a disclaimer warning. If you uh, are not fond of very basic and stupid misplays, don't watch my first turn here. Uh, this is one of the very rare instances where I actually just make a boneheaded table 500 level play. Uh, it is... I, I can't defend this one, it's it's really bad. <laughs> so uh, we're just going to start off here. Our opening hand's pretty good. Um, our opponent uh, is you know, actually very well equipped to deal with it because uh, you know there's a lot of ghost second power in here. 
as well as just ways to boost Maju. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and start off with Rat. And we send Bunny Blast, and the idea is to bring back Bunny Blast so we can add back Rat to have a guaranteed follow-up for next turn. But, uh, spoiler alert, I don't do that. <laughs> so I'm, like, doing this combo, and I'm like, why does this feel wrong? Like, literally as I was playing, I was thinking to myself, why does this feel not right? And, uh, yeah, you're supposed to detach the rat at some point to actually get it engraved to add back off the bunny blast, but, you know, we all have those days. Uh, yeah, I can't defend this one. <laughs> I'm just gonna move on here. Uh, feel free to roast me if you want. Uh, completely deserved on my end. But, it will turn out that it doesn't matter because A, I had the tanky in the whole time and I drew the whiptail, and B, I'm actually gonna die this turn. <laughs> so, they draw a copy of, uh, Kumungus. I just get Kaijude, and then Eater Millions, and then Grand Majude, and then Gizmect. <laughs> so uh, this right here is actually game, because uh, this Eater is going to boost the Maju up to 56, and then 56 plus 2450 is just over lethal. <laughs> so we actually just die. So it didn't even matter that we made that like very, very stupid mistake. But uh, yeah, just uh, for future reference, and for any of you guys watching, uh, Detach Rat, just, uh, just as a forewarning. And also, we weren't able to really use Avarice if we weren't going through the Mega Clops play, which is another downside of it. That's kind of why I'm not a big fan of this card, if you're not specifically going for that play. But also, like, they drew a Kaiju, so I mean, it didn't matter what we made. Unless we drew, like, specifically, like, a hand trap such as Valor to stop Maju, I guess. But uh, in the end, you know, in the end, we just died. Alright guys, so for game number three here, as you can see, I aborted to go second and force Grand Maju onto first. Traditionally, that deck doesn't have the most amazing turn 1 plays. Uh, it can have some if they play rank 8 depending on the build, but uh, this particular one doesn't really have as many of those options. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and activate Extravagance and then set the Super Poly and that'll be that. So yeah, we go ahead and uh, just go ahead and summon the Ram Ram and go in for a very small amount of damage before summoning Dryden. We're never gonna really owe to care our opponents, so figure just summoning Dryden defense afterward is fine. Uh, they pick up another copy of Extravagance, which is, uh, you know, pretty good. Uh, pretty good value there. Uh, they're going to Lightning Storm our back row. We chain combo just to get an extra Zoo name under board, or underneath the uh, Dryden there. And uh, when they go to Slumber, I actually chain Dryden to target itself so that it resolves without effect. Uh, that way they can't summon big Kaiju to their board. Um, unfortunately, they have a normal summon to Grand Maju, so now I am on a pretty uh, relevant timer. And here I kind of sequence plays a little bit weirdly. Uh, I kind of just try and think of how I can use Avarice and Living Fossil, and then I completely ignore the Pankratops, so I just totally forget to summon it. Uh, so totally my bad there. Because I'm trying to think of ways I can use the Avarice, because I only have five monsters in Grave. Because like, if I use Avarice first, then my Fossil is dead. Uh, so either way, like I'm going to have to rely on drawing a Zoo Monster off of this Avarice, because like the only other option is to do what I did here. Uh, AKA link away into gravity controller, but this is risky because uh, if I mind control Then I can't link away because it's gravity controller. So uh, yeah, that definitely was a bit of a Poor choice of sequencing here uh, And the only way this works is if I draw a zoo monster, but luckily, you know, our deck is still full of them So we do draw uh, You know, we do draw any zoo. It didn't even matter that it was rat to be honest, but yeah, It was nice to be able to just have it there uh, we go ahead and it's a little risky to play into the Super Poly that we know could be set because realistically the only back row the deck has is like maybe Floodgates, maybe, but usually it's Super Poly or possibly Imperm. Uh, but yeah, the way we do it is that we just don't have any opportunity for uh, our opponent to go into Mud Dragon at all. Um, and actually banish all their Mud Dragons even though they used it game one, so I'm surprised that they just didn't choose to keep it. Uh, what does this one require? Two level five or higher warriors. I kind of wonder why this is still in here, instead of a, uh, you know, instead of just a mud dragon that was actually summoned to turn one, but or game one rather. But uh, yeah, at this stage, you know, even regardless, uh, we didn't leave a window for Super Poly to actually be activated because uh, we're never having a Mega Clops on board at the same time as a zoo. And funnily enough, actually, if I kept the Pegatops, if I just summoned it and kept it there, uh, and there was still a mud dragon in here theoretically, uh, the Pegatops is an Earth, so that would have. Uh, facilitated that uh, much earlier so um, in hindsight you know I guess it's not actually that bad uh, given the fact that that's how things went down but uh, yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and get in here for a little bit of damage um, they're gonna evenly us which is actually fine because I want this gravity controller off of the board 
because uh, if they top deck another Grand Majo, I just lose because you know it's enough damage. Uh, but unfortunately, I have to pick between Dryden and a Megaclops. I decided Megaclops here just because I don't want to. I don't know, lose to something like. Uh, I don't. I don't want to lose to just a way to be able to out the Dryden because I feel like this is just a harder card for him now. Even though there are outs, obviously there's Kaiju's. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and combo to just try and draw another card that can help us, and we do pick up a Gozen, which is nice. Uh, the DD Crow is going to banish the Slumber. I kept this in, even though it's obviously Maju, so like you would think, why would you keep cards that banish? Uh, but it's there for a, a Gizmic Orochi and for a Slumber, so that definitely was nice there. Um, unfortunately, there is another Kaiju, so that's gonna just be dropped in our face here. Uh, we do pick up a Desires, which is good because we're out of Zeus. Uh, we pick up another Zoo, and uh, this is the only card I think in the whole deck that triggers the Gizmic Uka because it summons from deck, or it triggers when a uh, monster summoned from deck. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and see another Uka come down. So I'm just trying to figure out how to get game here. So I decided just my control, uh, go into Mrs. Radiant, and uh, we can't have game, or we don't have game here. But I figure you know our monsters are big enough that we should be in an okay spot. Uh, I believe Grand Maju is a fire. Yeah, Grand Maju is a fire, and Eater I do also believe is an is a dark. Uh, I'm just trying to remember the attributes. Uh, so like the Gozen should help out a little bit here. So yeah, here I'm just hoping that uh, it's gonna be enough. Yeah, Eater is a dark, yes. So it's like all the remaining resources, the two cards in the hand, and the three in the extra deck. Uh, I side a Valor here just because I wanna, you know, I wanna keep my monsters on board. Because, uh, like, worst case scenario, I could tribute for Pankratops and then pop it. Uh, wouldn't be ideal, of course, I just lose in top deck Maju, but um, I just want to keep my options open here. Uh, and then for turn, we draw a zoo. We just needed any zoo, really. Uh, just to be able to, you know, get over, uh, get enough damage on board. And we just go for Borbo and, oops, Borbo and attack directly. And that is how we take this one. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, that is how that game went down. A little sloppy play, especially here, uh, in games 2 and 3. Like, the Plays a little bit weird, um, but I was. This is me kind of warming up and getting used to the deck. The other matchups uh, should be a little bit better. All right, so for match number two here, we're actually going to be against Infernoble. Uh, so we're already going to be playing against some of the meta decks. Um, but yeah, we you can see that we drew Driver, but we did do have hand traps as well, which is nice. Um, and these are okay hand traps. Crow is not that great, but it can hit at least the Marcher target. Um, like I mentioned, so uh, I just never want to play into Nibiru. By the way, this is why like I don't commit like Barrage here. I want to have follow up plays and not play into Nibiru for no reason. Because um, like yeah, you can trade one for one. Because like usually all you're getting rid of uh, or all your opponents getting rid of with Nibiru is your Dryden. But you know, not really any reason to play into it if you don't have to. And like you'd rather just keep this. Um, oops, I keep clicking the swap button by mistake. Uh, my bad. But yeah, opponent actually main deck Stark Ruler, uh, and you know that I guess does answer the Dryden. So yeah, we're here uh, just trying to now react a little bit to what our opponent's doing. Uh, here I figure that uh, I, I'm tempted to just Valor the first effect of uh, Izzold, but I'm like, mm, you know, I really just don't want to risk having another just extender, like maybe like a Fire Flint Lady to go into a second Izzold. Because even though their search is important, you be able to like facilitate Tatanoka plays, I'm just like, maybe, but it's probably better to just hold it for the second effect, that way, you know, the hard ones returns are out of the way and I don't have to worry about it anymore. So I just hold it for that. It prevents uh, whichever warrior they summon. And funnily enough, my opponent scoops here, so uh, I'm kind of interested to in why, because the guy just attacked over, uh, and there's no way Zoo kills you. Uh, so like you could easily just follow up. I'm pretty sure my outs to gear feed would be very limited. Like, I would go Barrage, and then, um, like, this, if, if there's a way to answer Dryadent before, you know, summoning Gearfreed, then, uh, like, that could just win the game single-handedly, so, I feel like scooping there was very, very preemptive, but, uh, we're gonna go ahead, this is still a full match, so my opponent didn't just give up on the match there, so we're gonna go and move on to game two here. So here in game number two, we are going second, and we open... Okay, hand traps. Uh, Ogre on the Azold search is actually nice, just because it is harder for them to recover into a second Azold on like uh, something like Valor. Uh, so like you give them the search, but it takes off the body, which is a pretty, pretty nice uh, choke point. And uh, Crow again is like pretty low impact, but uh, it is still fairly versatile. It's not going to be completely dead most of the time. So yeah, uh, Azold is going to be met with Ghost Ogre on my end, 
and then uh, living fossil is going to be the extender but i actually do have the crow for that which is uh, pretty nice here uh, and then they're just going to go ahead and gear feed and equip durendal uh, and then durendal summon uh or search renaud and then summon the renaud so there actually was uh actually ex enough extension to go into the second isil despite all of that that's pretty unfortunate i have no more hand traps this is basically just a full combo so uh yeah if you guys are uh, haven't seen the Infernoble combo yet for some reason, uh, here it is. It's basically just summon level 2 tuner off Izzled, go into Link Cross, go into uh, Marcher, go into Tatsunoko. Normally you make the Savage before you go for Hulk. That's like the whole point of it. Like you go into it with the Tatsunoko in the red layer. Uh, here, my opponent just does it now. Um, I mean, you're supposed to insulate yourself against hand traps. Uh, but uh, since I didn't have any other hand traps, then it was kind of just a moot point. But your power tool grabs either DDR or Living Fossil. And then you just somehow bring back your level 2 tuner after you go and bring back your uh, desk bot again. You go for Herald. And then, yeah, here basically just scoop it up because uh, that's basically just a play, the full play. And you DDR, you banish the level 2 tuner. You, or sorry, you have Phoenix play, banish the level 2 tuner. Then you DDR it back. And then you make Roland with a 3 and a 2. And then you make Charles with a. This would become a 4 because there's not going to be any more tokens on board. Uh, so yeah, that's going to be the full board. I'm going to get smoke grenaded, and I'm going to have to deal with two negates, and my card for turn is a rat, which is fine, but it's, it's not going to clear this board. So yeah, just going to go for game three here. Alright, so the first two games are pretty uninteractive, and uh, spoiler alert, so is this one. Because, uh, you know, we got a couple of good cards in our opening hand. Uh, but yeah, we're going first here, which is pretty, pretty ideal, because uh, then we didn't open any hand traps. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and just cycle through with Thoroughblade and then make a Dryden and then pass on our three sets. Our opponent is going to go ahead and special red layer and then go into the battle phase to force out the Dryden, which is successful. Um, I detached the Thoroughblade there because like at that at this point having the attack body doesn't matter as much and I want to have this living fossil alive just for possible further extension. Then my um, opponent goes for uh, Ogier and then sends a uh, Arthur Duder and then Renaud brings it back. So I'm like, okay, here what I could do is like I flip up goes on resolution, that'd be fine, but I want to get value out of it because I've read Arthur Duder and it actually says uh, you target a set card your opponent controls and then Quip Monster loses 500 and then if it does destroy that target, uh, it doesn't say destroy it. So if you target a floodgate and then it gets chained and it's flipped face up, it actually doesn't get destroyed off Arthur Duder. So that's why I was like, hmm, if I actually get lucky here, then and he picks one of our two goes and matches, then we are you know, pretty good. And luckily for us, uh, we were able to just flip it up. And that's the end of the match. <laughs> so yeah, not a lot of interaction. I really do think that game one, I'm not sure why my opponent scooped. Um, playing it out honestly would have been pretty ideal, but that's kind of just the way that these combo matchups are going to go. Uh, besides for that game one, is that like, you flip up Floodgate, or like, you hope you have enough hand traps to stop them, and... Uh, that's like get game for you. If not, if they can resolve the full combo through your hand traps, then you just lose. Uh, kind of just how the format is right now, and I'm sorry that that's, this wasn't super interactive. But the next matchup against Dragon Link will actually be fairly interactive, surprisingly. Alright, so this final match is going to be up against Dragon Link, and interesting, our opponent is on a main deck Lancia. I would presume that this is the only Lancia, I'm not going to go and check. But uh, you can do a play where you search it by targeting Herald with Brotar. Uh, against Dino. Uh, that's more of a side deck thing though, I feel. I feel like you're never going to go for that play blind, uh, so I feel like this is this should just be sided. But uh, yeah, our opponent is going first. They have a... Uh, I think they're going first. Yeah, they are. So they have um, an interesting combo, uh, which is funny because looking back on this, if I just DD Crow the Red Rose, they don't have a way to go to Romulus, uh, which is kind of hilarious to think about it. Uh, but yeah, our hand has a couple of hand traps. Uh, not amazing ones, but decent ones. Yeah, if I DD Crow here, my opponent actually just passes. Uh, so, feels bad that I, you know, didn't do it. But like, you know, who really would red row, or banish a red rose, right? Like, why would you do that? Because they could have like quick launch, or they could have like just a billion other extenders. They could have like, I don't know, hard draw and red MD. Um, to be fair, this isn't one of their best starters. So like, maybe, maybe there's a case to like banish it, but I mean... They could be World Legacy like, Guard Dragon, in which case they just chain to it, and that's better. So, I don't know. Um, yeah, it, it just feels bad, like, look, looking at this and being like, wow, I could have actually just, like, prevented this whole thing if I just DD Crowed. But, happens, I guess. Uh, Divine Alliance comes down, and uh, Phalanx comes out, and then here I drop the Token Collector. This is, like, one of the few decks where this card is pretty relevant. Uh, but, unfortunately, it's actually not going to be enough to stop the play. 
I just go into Halk, and we know that there's a uh, Collapse Serpent that was searched. Um, so yeah, they go into LP, and then they also have Ravine, which was hard drawn, or not hard drawn, the Divine Lance was hard drawn, so this was searched. Uh, and they pitched Lancia to send the uh, the Abza router, uh, so they can just bring uh, Tracer out with the uh, Boot Sector and then just keep playing. So this is going to be just, you know, Dragon Link stuff. There's no other good, like, there's no actual good opportunity here. Like, I could have, I could have, uh, I guess I could have DD Crow to the Tracer when they went to go s pop with Striker, but they're getting Venom D searched anyway, and it's like, they don't actually need this Tracer in hand, because... Um, because it was already summoned off a of boot sector, and the normal summons already used. So they go into a very interesting line here. Um, I think they messed. Yeah, they definitely messed that up for sure. I don't know why they went protector whelp there. It could have just been like banish LP to summon Red MD, and then um, honestly going into going for that striker play was like. Not very good because you usually want to pissy back the tracer anyway. So this is like a very very strange line. Um, yeah, this definitely sh was not the right end board. It should have been sealed as well. Like this was the full play, but I I don't really know what happened here. Like I don't really know why my opponent chose to go the route that they did. But uh, regardless, um, yeah, we can't really play through Buster Lock even though it's just uh, one interruption and I guess Imperm as well. But yeah, I don't really have outs to the Buster Lock. So yeah, you're just gonna see me kind of you know sitting here twiddling my thumbs, trying to out it. Uh, Imperm is like, whatever, it doesn't actually do anything. Uh, we just, you know, just try and stay alive. Uh, our opponent top decks a quick launch. Uh, they could have summoned Tracy from Grave, or recharged it from Grave. But I uh, just didn't do it. Um, so yeah, they just go for another recharger. Um, I think that's the second one, right? Uh, yeah, it's the second recharger. And this dies because of quick launch. Yeah, so I'm like, the only way it, I can really out this is if I can somehow force a negation and have a ghost ogre in hand, but that's like such small, such a small chance of that happening, because like, what really could I use that would force this negation? Like, maybe a desires, but I don't know. Uh, but yeah, our opponent keeps drawing really good cards. Um, yeah, they use Savage, and then we just, uh, we just double DD Crow. So, I mean, not that it really is that impactful. They could have also added back this Recharger and then gotten back like Red MD. So like, they, I feel like... I should have died a long time ago, to be honest. Um, but yeah, here I'm just like trying to still draw out. Uh, here, if I had like an ogre, that would have been great. Um, but yeah, I maybe should have held desires. But like, I was just trying to see if I could draw out of things sooner. Uh, drawing Nibiru for turn, not really that useful. Uh, we just try and stay alive here. And now the savage doesn't have any counters, so we actually can't ogre anymore. So uh, yeah, we don't really have a good way to out this because we don't play any main deck. And then we draw ogre for turn. So um, a little unfortunate. Uh, can't really say that I should have waited an extra turn because like I banished ten cards, I drew two, and I drew all in off a third blade, and I drew for turn, so that was fourteen cards deep. Not the next; it wasn't actually the next card. So um, holding desires doesn't necessarily make a difference there. And I think I looked. I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, I looked through the banish pile and I didn't banish any ghost ogres. Uh, so yeah, like it was actually just fourteen cards deep into the deck, so that was obviously just going to be way too late. So yeah, we lose this one. Uh, on to game two. Right, so game number two here, we're going first. Uh, we have a pretty decent hand. We have Desires, which is always nice to see. Uh, they have Droplet and Chalice. Chalice is a really interesting one. Uh, really not sure why this is being played, but uh, it's an interesting choice. It does answer Dryden, funnily enough. Um, and then Lightning Storm is there for like back row, I guess, but I'm not really playing that much back row. And the ones I am are... Yeah, they are. They could be floodgates or they're chainable like this, uh, which is something I was testing. It is not in the final build because I. This is the match where I realized that uh, if you banish your only Dryden while this is active, uh, that definitely is not a good thing. So yeah, eventually cut it like, after this match. So yeah, uh, lightning storm comes down. I chain the duty ground, just acts as a deterrent, and then they're gonna go battle phase, and then I'm gonna chain Dryden. Obviously, or not chain, but on the tactic creation, use Dryden. Um, and then they're going to use Chalice, which I'm like, ah, you got me. <laughs> you got me there. So I definitely sucked losing the only Dryden. So now I have to figure out how to actually win the game, uh, which is tough, but I'm just going to try and uh, play beatdown with a bunch of hand traps. Luckily, I do have enough hand traps to stop my opponent's combo all the time, or like for the most part. Uh, Brotar comes down, which definitely is unfortunate. Uh, they pitch a drop flip. 
And here I'm just like, okay, now I have to figure out uh, where I need to stop my opponent. Um, so, like, I, I know that they have less cards to start off with, so I figure, you know, Veiler here is pretty decent. Uh, we can just uh, hope that my opponent goes into Link Frost if they have another extender and they can token collector them. But they just go into battle phase, beat over the Tiger, and chalice it. I'm like, okay, I guess this side deck's chalice is, I guess, putting in some work against the Zoo matchup. Um, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and combo here and try and draw more cards. Uh, we draw another Living Fossil, which is not great, Hogwarts Return, but uh, you know, we do need ways to have Zoos every single turn, so it's nice. Especially when we don't have Dryden. So yeah, we're going to bring back Blade, and we're just going to keep going here. Uh, and we're just going to attack and... Uh, yeah, I did put back the, put back the other Thread Blade, that's why it's not there. And uh, my opponent draws a Tactics, and they're going to Sector, I believe, try and summon from Grave. Uh, and then I'm just going to Ogre it. And they're going to Tactics, draw two. Uh, but they, they draw a Feather Duster and Nibiru, I didn't even see this uh, replay, so I didn't know what they drew off of it. So that's kind of funny. Uh, so here we're actually, unironically, playing Tiger Mortar Beatdown. Uh, I summoned a Shock and I think he had a Zoo in Grave, and I didn't. So that's kind of awkward. So I was gonna try and go for like, go for game here, um, or like push for a lot of damage, because uh, I could have, like, I could have linked away with the norm the normal summon with uh, whatever I brought back off Shock and Nine for Mrs. Radiant. I could have like Living Fossil something back. I got could have gone for a Drill Driver Vespinato. Uh, that would have been like three K plus nineteen plus uh, twenty one, which would have been seven um, K damage. That would have been game. If I had a zoo in grave here, but I didn't, so that is a little sad. But we're just gonna hope that again, this uh, gets us there. But it's a little scary because we are running out of hand traps. But luckily, our opponent draws the third Nibiru. Wow, I actually did not watch this replay. That is so funny. That opponent actually drew all three Nibiru. That's uh, that's kind of hilarious. And I was never really playing into that, so uh, that's pretty good. Uh, maybe the OTK line that I mentioned earlier would have played into it. So uh, blessing in the skies, perhaps. But yeah, that is going to do it for game two. All right, so it's game three. We have three hand traps, but they have probably the most crazy hand that you'll ever see in Dragon Link. Uh, and the draw they have off Chaos Base is Black Metal Dragon, which, you know, this hand doesn't require the normal summons. So, uh, yeah, this is ex basically Exodia if you don't have, like, really high impact hand traps like uh, Gamma, Nibiru. Uh, obviously, we're not playing Nibiru because budget, but... Yeah, this is this is just an insane hand. There's actually just nothing you can really do against this kind of opener. It's actually some of the best, you know, five cards you can ask for. Um, so they're gonna get Nocto, and I'm like, okay. As soon as I saw Cast Base Absorber plus Nocto, I'm like, all right, this is gonna be pretty pretty absurd. Uh, so I drop Valor, hoping that I can cut off. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have done it because I knew they had that Tracer, so they would have had a Tuner Extender. Probably should have actually. Hmm. Could have ogred this, taken off the body. That might have been better, because then I could have saved L or this for LP. Uh, so, yeah, I probably should have ordered this differently, given the fact that I knew that there was a tracer there. Um, but yeah, Link Frost is going to bring out tokens. Uh, I think, I, I, yeah, I do think I didn't ogre because I wanted to just use this collector. So I drop it, uh, thinking that, okay, how many more extenders can my opponent have? Uh, so, like, this is the one that I know. And I know about Hulk, and I'm like, okay, maybe I ogre the Hulk so that they can't get zones for uh, LP is my like thought process. Uh, but then they normal the black metal, and then they can go into Herald here, which actually triggers Red Rose and triggers the black metal. So I'm like, all right, I'm just pretty screwed at this point. Um, yeah, when they revealed the black metal, I knew I was just done, like super done. Yeah, this is like super, super insane. And no materials in the side deck here, which is kind of funny. Um, but yeah, this is just like beyond game uh yeah like living fossil comes down here and it's just you know when your opponent has you know this many extenders it's you know, kind of hard to uh to lose at this point uh, especially when uh, the hand traps that i drew were not like the most amazing hand traps uh this is the full combo uh, through all the hand traps and uh yeah, it doesn't matter what we what we do here we're gonna get ripped for one as well so yeah this is just uh this is just game. We can't. We're, it's hard to play through a Buster Lock as as is, let alone all of this. So, yeah, you know, it is what it is, and that is sometimes just how Dragon Link works. So, closing thoughts. Uh, the deck is in an interesting spot. You can see that like the games are not particularly super interactive, per se. It's just you play a lot of hand traps and just kind of hope it's enough. 
Um, yeah, like it's it's decent, but it lacks a lot of power. It lacks ways to really close games really well, uh, which is what I don't really like about this specific kind of a build. Um, it certainly has the tools to do well. It's just like really really tough. Um, you know, ways to easily in improve the deck are just to play Dogmatica cards or to play uh, you know, Dragoon as well. Like Those are options that you can do. Um, but considering we're on a budget, I feel like this is a, probably the best that you can do with the Zoo, uh, given the current metagame. Again, if you are playing in you know, an environment that is different from just heavy combo, then probably stray away from playing 13 hand traps in the main deck, or 14 hand traps rather, in the main deck, uh, and just play more actual utility cards. Uh, like You can like main deck some of the side of cards. But yeah, I think overall this is kind of like what you can expect from pure zoo, especially on a budget. Uh, and I don't think it performed that badly. Uh, it was, you know, not the best deck for sure, uh, as you know, most budget decks aren't ever going to be really optimized. But uh, it is definitely a contender if you want to try and uh, steal some games by just overwhelming your opponent with hand traps and summoning a zoo, uh, and then just sticking a dryden every turn. So yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like as well as any thoughts or feedback in the comment section down below. Uh, feel free to subscribe for more informative and competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! content. If you want to, you can follow me on Discord, Twitter, or Twitch. All the links are in the description down below. And once again, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I'll catch you in the next video. See you guys.